Arrival. Jay, how are you, man? I'm fine. How are right, you? Hurry up and go. All right. And then I got to go. This is what happens. What This is the chunky dunk for us. Now it's the bathroom issue. So, so Jay, now following that, how long have you lived on Fort Myers Beach? Um, This would have been our fourth winter. Fourth winter. So you stay down here just... Where we are here from usually right after Labor Day until about the middle of May. And then we go back to Western New York. Oh, where in Western New York? Uh, Chautauqua, just south of yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. I uh, did an internship in Jamestown. Oh, well, that's we live yeah. on Chautauqua Lake. Yeah. In yeah. Jamestown. It's right there. Yep. Yeah. No kidding. Small yeah. world. It was in the winter, so it was it uh, less than desirable. Yeah. It's, a lot, it's very but... pretty in the summer. but. So where where was your home here? <clears throat> on our boat. On, uh, oh, okay. Yep. Snook Bite Marina. Nice. And so tell us, tell us, kind of walk us through like before as you were getting the reports. So so we have uh, I think it was 14 foot uh, pilings with with floating docks. That's not bite. So we obviously all thought that the storm was going north until about midnight the night before when it took a turn and started coming at us. But a couple three or four days before that, we started to prepare the boats and put extra lines and take the eyes and glass down, take everything down, take all the cushions off the boat. Did you ever think at that point, like, let's. Let's go someplace. Else. Let's uh, go around. And I no, mean, no, we didn't because we we weren't we at that point we thought it was going to Tampa. Okay. So and it and kind of ironic. I mean, a couple of days before the storm, we took a dinghy ride down here in the bay and we saw several boats with Port of Call, Tampa, Florida, because they all came, came down, down here to get out of the storm and they were all in Estero Bay. And two days after the storm, we saw them all piled up over there on the side oh, of the. You know, they, I didn't they, even they, had they stayed home, that. they would have yeah. been fine. So so we prepared the boat as best we could. Um, bunch of us hung out up in the in the uh, captain's lounge a couple of days before and we're having a grand old time because we thought it was going north and we just thought we were going to get some storm surge and some winds and we were going to be okay but obviously the night before and when it took a turn we kind of figured we were in for some trouble so um so we were up my wife and i um another couple from the marina and two single gentlemen were up in the captain's lounge at the back of snook bite marina which is about 30 feet above the water and, mm -hmm. the, and, the, and the building was rated for cat five so we fit we were pretty safe so, uh, so there was never any question about let's go hang nope. out in the boat. It no. was we're no, going. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the morning of the storm, the boat next to us, which wasn't really properly prepared for the storm, kind of broke free and it was banging into our boat. So I I went out in my bathing suit, um, naturally a life jacket and uh, didn't bring anything with me, you know, a phone or wallet or identification or anything. I went out on under the dock and try to put a couple of extra fenders between our boat and the boat next door to try to you know limit the Protect damages it, yeah, as much yeah. as i could well i was out there for probably 45 minutes to an hour and didn't realize that in that particular 45 minutes to an hour how much bad worse that the storm had gotten the storm surge really started to roll in the winds really started to pick up and i heard a pop and i turned around and i saw that the dock section had snapped from the main dock so i i, I couldn't get back no way <clears throat> I had no way to get back to the to the building. And what are they thinking inside? Are my, they my, watching all this going yeah. on? So my wife was up in the captain's lounge in the window watching me, and I threw my hands up saying, you know, I'm not getting back. So <sighs> so I, you know, at that point I was I was stuck on the boat. I had a VHF radio. I and my wife had a handheld where the, the people in the in the uh, upstairs had a VHF radio. So I went up and communicated with her because there was no cell phone service uh -huh. at that time. And told, you didn't and, have one and, anyway, no, right. so yeah. And um so I, I just said, hey, you know, I'm going to be all right. We got 14 right. foot high pilings. We get the storm surge. I'm gonna, I'll be out here. I'm going to be fine. So let me just I'm just trying to think about this in my head. So you turn around, you hear a pop, you turn around. The dock has come away. Is it now moving or it's just you it, can't get back? It is so just it is separated and pulled apart, probably for myself to that table. I thought, to be honest with you, for a split second about you jumping, could jump, jump in. <laughs> yeah. But the but the water was just moving, just so like the, a raging you, river at that the time. The boat was still attached to the, the boat pilings. Was still, it's still okay. attached to the dock. Okay. And 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 the and we you know we had probably yeah. twelve feet left because on the on the piling. So I still thought I was going to be fine. I talked to my oh. wife. Said I'm going to be fine. It's going to be a rough night, but I'm going to be okay. So I sat there and I watched the water rise and rise, mm. and I watched the porta potty float into the water, and I watched cars floating by, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, I had 
six feet left on the piling, four feet left on the piling, two feet, and then and then the, the, the dock went up over the piling. Now, when you saw the porta potty fly by, was it clean or was it one of the uh, dirty ones? I, I, it was still upright, so I mean, it was a okay. pretty clean one there. Yeah. Snook bite. They take they take care of everything. There's so, one over here yeah. I just used, yeah. totally clean. Yeah, they got the. That's yeah. one of the best ones. It ended up ones. it ended up coming to rest by the fountain out there at Snook yeah. bite. So it never now made it. Tell it where exactly is Snook Bike? It's directly behind Publix, Mid Island. It used to be called Mud I Mid Island Marina. Snook gotcha. Bike Marina. Gotcha. And it's where the uh, Fresh Catch Bistro is yeah. now in Junkanoo. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So what happens next with you? Oh. So, so, so um, what are you thinking at that point? I was thinking that I was still going to, when, when, the, when the boat went up, over, when the, the dock went up over the pilings, I thought it was just a matter of time before I started to float away. So, so that's what you were thinking. What right. were you feeling? Um, Pretty scared. Panic. Do you have yeah. a life yeah. jacket on? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Can you swim? Yep. I can swim. Yeah. yeah. Are you afraid but, of sharks? Uh, not no, at that, that point. Probably, you know, at right. that point, I wasn't <laughs> thinking about it. To be What's honest the with weather you. like going on around you at the, the wind time? Is, the wind. I had never experienced the, the sound of that wind mm -hmm. that strong. I mean, it literally did sound like a freight train. It, yeah. You know, and, and the water was just, we had probably eight foot surges and i mean uh, swells. Uh, swells in the back wow. bay back there because the water the wind was coming directly out of the south at that time eight <clears throat> foot so they, it, the boat was just just rocking so i had dropped the anchor down on about 300 feet of line prior to the storm in case that in case it did float away hoping that maybe the anchor would catch the boat and it would it, it would you know minimize some of the damages so before that i went out and i and i i crawled out on the boat and i cut the two lines that were still remaining because i didn't want the weight of the dock and the other boats to, 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 to you know to to prevent my boat from being held by the anchor how so, many people so, would know to do that though i mean i, I well I, mean, I think if you own a boat yeah, you should yeah. know how to do that yeah yeah so I, you I, I used to he own a got us lost he got us stranded in the back here for seven and a half hours one time i literally had so much um sunburn that my face was purple by the time we we got we got help did you, you know the air horn you're yeah, supposed yeah. to have yeah. like a minimal right. amount of safety mm -hmm. no nope. nothing so nothing. Yeah. the so, real the story next time was i'm going with you because the first mistake was it was Get a bay liner it. we i uh, had a bay liner which was a it's a hand-me-down boat it's not really a boat bay and liner is had, probably a good boat you just don't no, know what you're doing really. well we had a backup battery on the boat so the first battery died and apparently the second battery was a bad battery so we had two bad batteries on the boat and for some reason we were catching fish, so I'm like, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out, but we're catching fish, so let's just keep going. But the boat was going the wrong way. It wasn't yep. coming back in. So The other thing, too, is, you know, when you take the boat out of the water, you're supposed to do that. Yeah, where you're you supposed lift to lift the, the trim yeah. up. Yeah. No. No. Not so much. But go ahead. Right. We digress. Cool. Well, well, you digress to insult <sighs> me. No, I digress you to sell, tell entertaining you stories like you in the locker room. You opened up. And I yeah. just walked. Through. I've never been on a boat since, by the way. Well, no. Have you? Uh, I've been. We've rented a few boats. We're living up in St. Pete now. You and know, you're OK with getting back on the water. Oh, yeah, totally we're going, OK. We're going right back on the water nice. as, soon as, as soon as we're yeah. able. So, so let's so get back to your right. story. Enough yeah. about so the, her story. So the boat starts to float away. And about three or four minutes later, it comes to an abrupt halt. And I'm thinking, this is great that the anchor held. I mean, right. It's going to be a rough night. I'm going to ride it out here in the, in the bay and I'm going to be tossing around. Yeah. And within about five minutes, the, the anchor chain just went just snapped no right, way. Back, right back up over the bay. The, the pressure of the water. How close and, was it to hitting you? Well, I was downstairs. So, I mean, I was inside and it went up over the bridge. Are you a religious then, person? Not too much. So you but, weren't but, doing any but praying? I, but, but, uh, but uh, well, I was then. <laughs> she yeah, became, yeah. 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 So I was then. when that cuts loose, like before it cuts loose, are you just kind of oh, yeah. getting tossed yeah, yeah, around? Like yeah, so you're up. like no, yeah. like a bounce house right. in there. Yeah, pretty much. ping wow. off yeah. everything. Yeah. Vomiting, throwing up the whole thing. No, was, I would have been totally no, vomiting. Did just, you have a helmet on? I was just, just holding on. Helmet? Just to, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Where's a helmet? I didn't have a helmet well, I don't know. He says he had a helmet on their boat. Kind of crazy crap. I would bring everything. So after the flares, after the after the chain snap, then the boat takes off and and which and direction is the boat i going? had no idea which no. direction. i had no idea where i couldn't see the building anymore i didn't know where i was wow. i didn't know what was out there i didn't know anything so it was just like being in a snowstorm with the water but and luckily you're not in the gulf you're in the back bay right, right? Exactly. so you're we gonna land either in the mangroves yeah. or you're gonna yep. hit another boat or right. so where did you yeah. but where? you don't know because right. now the right. bay the gulf yeah. is connected right. to it's the bay right. so so as the boat's moving the which seemed like an eternity 
the, the, at, at one point, the entire port side went into the boat, and I thought, oh. I, thought it, I, I thought it was going to capsize. That's when you know I thought this you're going to drink. This is it. Yeah. So, but by the grace of God, I, I must have hit the mangroves and it and the boat uprighted, and then all I heard was <laughs> trees flying through the mangroves. Right. So we we ended up or I ended up 270 or 280 feet deep on the Julie's Island, the, the uh, uh, mangrove patch directly across from the marina. How far do so, you think your boat started to where it, where it ended up? Uh, it was probably three quarters of a mile, a mile by the time it finally wow. came to rest. That's so, I'm, crazy. I'm think, I would have thought farther. I mean, no. I really thought you could have. I thought I had gone. How far did you think I thought I had gone? gone to St. Pete, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it right. seemed like an eternity. How long do you, you know? think the time was that you were? You know what? To be honest with you, I, people have asked me that, and I and I I, I don't have any record. I, I just yeah. I, no. I just did, I must were you have been in shock. conscious the whole yeah. time. I was conscious the whole time. How did you get out? How did you get out? Did so, you walk out? So yeah, you're so, in the mangroves. So so um so the boat came to rest in the mangroves, and by the time that that um you know the wind had died, and by the time I could get up on the bridge and try to get to my uh, VHF radio. And, and uh, hit the Mayday button for the Coast Guard, um, it was dark. So I really didn't know where I was at that particular point in time. So I shot a flare off, and my wife ended up, did say, because she was, she was in the captain's lounge, so now she, I was directly, basically Okay, directly I missed the first the part. The captain's lounge. The captain's lounge is in, is snook in bite. Snook bite Marina. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, how are you? So it's kind of like a lounge for the people that, that have a boat there, and you can go up. And so it, so we, we were kind of hanging out up there before the storm. Sort of like the Delta so, Club. Yeah. Yeah. So she she, she saw sees, the flare. She sees the flare. So uh, so I go up um, and I hit the the red Mayday button for the Coast Guard. And, On and the that's, boat, it's, it's, still it's, it's, it's still it's, working. It's, yeah, that the, all the electronics are still working. Wow. So so that's called an MMSI number. It's registered with the Coast Guard. It gives them the exact coordinates. And I had two uh, two contacts registered: my son and my wife. And um, I, I got on the VHF radio and tried to call my wife on the VHF radio, hoping that because they had one up in the I handheld one up in the up, mm. up in the lounge. And I, I, I wasn't able to get a hold of her. But about 10 minutes later, I heard her on the VHF radio. So I ran upstairs and we talked for a brief moment. She goes, she said, the Coast Guard got your information. They have your coordinates. They're not coming out tonight because they're not going to jeopardize the, sure. you know, the safety right. of, their, yeah, that's of their guys. All the, right? uh, that's what all the folks, like the fire department said, they're, they're not going right. out right. until the storm's yep. over. Right. So they, and he, she said they will be there in the morning. They, they know you're there. So it, it made it a little bit better. So I, I, I went downstairs. I checked the engine room. I didn't have any water in the engine room. So I knew I wasn't going to sink. Crazy. Um, and I closed Did you off. have any water to drink, though? I had water and I had oh, bourbon. So, oh, well, there you go. Yeah. 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 Very nice. So Kentucky yeah. bourbon? <laughs> yes. Is there yeah. any other? Yeah. Did you drink so, the water or the bourbon? I had a little of both. Yeah. 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 So, so I, were you uh, hung over the next I, day? I, I, no, no, no. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> I, uh, you were like, did you sleep I, at all for bit. days? I think did I did you? a little bit, yeah, but, but not much after that. So I closed all the seacocks because I didn't want anything crawling up into the boat, you know, that night. And then in the morning, um, when it, when the first light came, I could the the, the, the mangroves are just filled Destroyed. with debris. I mean, yeah. just, I mean, you, I mean, you houses, it. Yeah. cars, everything. everything. Yeah, there was everything in there, but there was a paddle board. From about from me to the end of the bar away in the mangrove. So I said, hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to go get that paddle board. If worst case, in there, I don't know when the Coast Guard's coming. Right. I'm going to get the paddle board and I'll get it and I'll and I'll put it in the water and I'll paddle back across the bay At over to the point, marina. You could tell where you were. Yeah, so I knew, you knew exactly where I was. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. light out. Yeah. And it's yeah. probably a nice yeah. day. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah. And the water wasn't too rough. It wasn't bad. So, so I I duct taped my uh, flip flops to my feet. I said, I always say it's amazing how your 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 survival instincts kick in when you're in yeah. that situation. Because I, when I jumped down in, I didn't I didn't you know I didn't want to lose my flip flop and cut my feet all up and oh, risk an infection. So I, I uh, duct taped my flip flops. I, I went through the mangroves and the mangroves are I mean they're they're brutal. They're oh, like yeah. they're yeah. like vines, yeah. they're vineyard, grape vineyard. And that's yeah. before they have debris in it. Yeah. yeah. I mean my arms are just starting to heal up now from being all cut up. So I I got the I got the um the paddle board. And just as I wrestled the paddleboard up onto the swim platform on my VHF radio, I heard, you know, uh, a vessel port and starter. This is incoming Coast Guard helicopter. Da, 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 da. Wow. You know, we're, you know we're, we're coming to extract you, um, looking for your location. So I could see him out over the beach on the southern end of the beach. So I, call, I, I got a hold of him and I said, you know, if you look north and you look west, you, you know, I'm going to shoot a flare off and I'll give you my, you know. So they said, OK. So I shot a flare. And within five minutes, they were hovering right over the top of the boat. So did they drop the so basket did, and you they, had they, to get in the, they, oh, they my goodness. They dropped the basket. They, they, cool. they dropped the, the Coast Guard guy down first and he told me exactly what to do. You can get a couple of bags of clothes. So being the smart guy I am, I went down, I got all my wife's clothes so that, so that she had. <laughs> and the bourbon. So that, so that she had clothes. And the bourbon. And I did get a little bourbon. Um, <laughs> 
and I loaded it into the basket and they told me to make sure I keep my hands inside the basket so you know they don't slam against the helicopter and, and uh, at break that my point you must have been feeling oh, I was, a yeah, range yeah. of oh, feelings you know, and yeah. joy it was, it was being crazy. one of them. Yeah. So now my wife is in the in the captain's quarters, you know, and, and she's in the window and she's watching yeah. this entire yeah. extraction, ah. you know, ah. seeing the whole thing. So she knows I'm getting rescued. But little did she know, I mean, we, so we got up in the, and, and the gentleman asked me, so where do you want to go? I said, I'd like to go. You guys toured it, I think a week or so ago, the, the harbor of, of condos right next door to Snook yep. Bite. Yep. I said, if you could let me down right over there on the beach, that'd be perfect. Cause my wife's in the Marina. I'll just walk across the street. Right, and they, right. they said, okay, fine. Right. We got to get two more people. One lady from Benita and one lady from Sanibel before we, before we take care of you. And they said, we're gonna, we might be up here for an hour or two, but just relax. So I said, fine. So these guys were rock stars. I mean, they gave me, they gave me, uh, Who are they? we need to and, get and, them and, on the know, show. They, I tell you what, they really, Coast Guard they, folks? They, they, these guys yeah. were, and when I, when I watched how they treated the ladies and I'll tell you, so we went to Benita and we picked up an, an elderly lady that was there. She could hardly speak English. She was there with, in a VRBO with her dog. She didn't, and, and she was just petrified. Oh. <clears throat> So they put her in the basket, they brought her up, and she sat next to me, and she had her dog, and she was just hysterical. So then from Benita, we went to Sanibel at about 100 feet off the deck all along the shoreline, and I got to see the devastation yeah. <clears throat> firsthand the next day. Yeah. All right. So we go to Sanibel and pick the lady up. And then uh, the, the, the Coast Guard guy says, sorry, man, we got direct orders to drop you guys off at Punta Gorda Airport. Oh. I'm like, put to go to airport. <laughs> I don't have any phone, oh no, no yeah. phone, no, 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 no money, no, no, nothing. Right. So they drop us off and put to go to airport and, and, and sorry to take so much time, but oh, so no. we, so we get, the, we, get the, we, we get the punt to go to airport. And um, so we go in and I, and I said to the lady, I said, Hey, they just dropped us off from Fort Myers beach. You know, what plan do you have for us? And she said, None. You know, we, we didn't even know you were coming. You guys are on your own. You know, we, yeah. we, you know, they, they had gotten damage at the airport, so they were trying to figure out stuff up there. So I, fortunately for me, I had a friend from up north that lives in Punta Gorda. He wasn't there for the winter yet. So I, I uh, was able to get a phone from the lady in Sanibel. She went out on the runway and found a little bit of cell phone coverage. So wow. I called my buddy up in New York, said, hey, I'm in Punta Gorda, stranded. Can I go to your house? He said, absolutely. He said, I'll tell my neighbors you're on your way. So... So now the CEO of the airport is there and he said, where are you trying to get to? And the CEO of the airport lives in Fort Myers. He said, where are you trying to get to? I said, my friend's house over on Susie Lane. He said, uh, I'll get you a cab. So he kept dialing, dialing, dialing. Couldn't, he said, I can't get it. I can't get you a cab. He goes, come on. He goes, I'm waiting for governor DeSantis to fly in, but I'm going to take you to your friend's house. This is more important. So this is the CEO of the airport. Wow. And I said, listen, if you got to wait for governor DeSantis, I, I can wait. You know? <laughs> He's like, nope. I'm taking you. So as we're driving out of the airport, sure enough, Governor DeSantis' jet is landing in Punta Gorda Airport. Wow. So he takes me to my friend's house, drops me off, gives me a card and says, here's 50 bucks. He goes, I know you don't have any money, but you know, here's my card. I don't know if anything's open or anything, but you might need some money down the road, you know, wow. before you get back. So my friend's neighbors let me in the house. So I'm sitting in his house and there's no no water, no phone, no lights, no nothing. It's hotter than you know what. Even the Punta Gorda, there's, yeah. there's oh, storm yeah. damage. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of damage up there. So I'm sitting in, in his living room and I said, desperate times call for desperate measures. So I went out, I went next door and I banged on this the gentleman's uh, door and I said, I noticed you have two cars in your driveway. I said, I need to use one of them to get back to Fort Myers Beach. My wife's down there. I said, I can't get a hold of her. And, and come to find out, I didn't know this until I finally got back, but she had called the Coast Guard and they told her I was in the hospital and they couldn't and, and they couldn't tell her what my condition was. Oh. So now all this time oh, she's thinking I'm in the hospital. Oh. So so the gentleman says, I can't let you take a car. He said, I got my kids here, my you know, all my grandkids. He said, but I'll tell you what, I'll drive I'll you. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. drive you to Fort Myers Beach. Yeah. I don't know this guy from Adam. So he goes, go to Ed's house. Get ready. I'll come here. If I saw he comes over five minutes later, picks me up. He said, my wife made you two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a couple <laughs> bottles of water. And it took us three hours to get from Punta Gorda to, to the base yeah. of Fort Myers Bridge with all the debris and everything that was down. Yeah. And, and, and the road. At that and all point, that, you, you know. can't get you can't no. get, get over, over the bridge. No. no. How do you no. Find, how do you finally so, contact your so wife? He, he drops me off at the base of the bridge and he gives me one hundred dollars, you know, and, and says it doesn't look like anything's open, but, but you might need yeah. some money. So. Now they got the big barricade, as you know, across the bridge. So I'm trying to sneak over the bridge, and the sheriff with catches no, sheriff, no nothing. I'm in my baby. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah, had yeah. a giant. Blah, blah, blah. They had a giant one of those trailers yeah. blocking the bridge. Yeah. Nobody yeah. was right. getting over. It was military style. So I'm trying to sneak over, and the sheriff yells at me, and he says, "Hey, 
you know, where are you going? I said, I'm going over, you know, to Snook Bite Marine. He goes, the hell you are. He said, you know, so I told him what my story was. And he said, go, go get to your wife, you know, go get over there. He said, if anybody on the other side of the bridge gives you trouble, he said, tell them to radio me. You're good to go. He said, just be careful because he said it's, you know. So I get up on the other side. I walk up over the other side of the bridge. Now I'm seeing the devastation again. Now yep. I'm walking through it after yep. I just saw it on the helicopter. And you're talking about before. a three-mile walk right. from yeah. the base oh, yeah. of the bridge. Yeah. Right. So I get, I get up over on the other side, and I find a bike that's submerged, you know, like buried in the sand. So I ripped this bike out of the sand. Didn't have a seat on it. And I, you couldn't ride on the road because there was so right. much sand yeah. on the road. So I went down on the beach. And it was there was still some hard sand down there, so I rode the beach, and I'm and I'm on know, a bike with no seat. On a bike with no seat, and I'm you know, I'm going by parts of houses, cars, stoves, refrigerators, couches. Uh, they're all wow. washed up. So I finally made it back to the marine about five o'clock on Thursday. How I, long did I, it take you to bike from? It, it took me about a, it seemed like an eternity to be honest yeah. with you because it was so hot, and uh, I hadn't eaten, and, yeah. you know, and or slept, and wow. and um, so I think I left the marine at about eleven o'clock on Wednesday morning, and I got back about six o'clock on Thursday night. Wow. That's how I finally made it back. That is crazy. So, and so when you show up and they're thinking you're at the hospital, yeah. they must have been. Yeah, my wife ran up to me and punched me. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the Coast Guard say you were in the hospital? I, I mean, have, how did they get that? I have no idea. They dropped you off in the airport. I have no idea. There was just yeah. so much. But, the, but these Coast Guard guys, yeah. when, when these two, when they got True these heroes. two ladies True in heroes. the helicopter, they would sit on the floor and they would pet the dog and they would talk to the ladies. And they were just amazing. Yeah. You, you really should get them on your yeah. show. It, it's. Yeah. They were they were out of Jacksonville. I don't know, but they were they were crazy. When you when you think back of that experience that you went through now, what I mean, how do you how does that compute to you? Like, uh, it's, are you it's, OK? It's just, are you OK? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 I know we, we drove back on the island a couple of weeks after all that. And, it, and, and I'm sure there was some form of PTSD because yeah. it just I mean, it just it was hard. Yeah. Yeah. So but, you know, I mean, I. I, I used to watch and being being up north, you'd see something from a hurricane in New Orleans and people would say, oh, I feel yeah. totally blessed. And I would always call BS on that. I'm like, how could you possibly feel blessed after that storm? But I do. I mean, I know there's a lot of people in a lot worse situation than we are right now. We've got insurance on our boat. We just finally settled on the insurance on the boat. I'm flying to Baltimore Tuesday to look at a new one in Annapolis. And but, as but, soon but, as Snow okay. rebuilt, we'll be back okay. on our boat. But most back. people don't go. How old are you? 64, 65. Well, I mean, okay, we're neither one of us are spring chickens. Nobody goes right. through that kind of stress, and and it it, it could have been a it could have killed you. Could you oh, could have yeah, died? I, it 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 could have been a lot. So how do how do you, what would you? I didn't say? realize it at the time, but after hearing everybody's story, and I bought the book the gentleman wrote, yeah, and I've yeah, you know, yeah. and, and I've been reading about some yeah. of the other accounts for people, and think you know that it, it could have gone worse. Was there a moment hurry. where you were like, yeah, uh, when the boat when, when the boat went the sideways, that? I just thought it was going to go this way, and the water was going to rush in. I thought I really thought you know, and then after chatting with my wife, she was like, you know, I'm I'm trying to figure out which one which one of our boys to call first to tell them you didn't make it. Whoa. So, but um, but it all worked out. And, yes. um, you know, I know this and, and I and I hear it. So I, I kept saying surviving the storm is the easy part. It's the aftermath. Yeah. Dealing with insurance and dealing with FEMA. And, and, and I and I'm trying to and so I read. So the about, storm experience yeah, is less right, of, a of a traumatic stress. event yeah. than this. And, right, I, and I read all you your go. accounts of what people are going through, trying uh, to rebuild their homes and the things that they're doing and, and think that we are blessed. I mean, yeah. I'm, we're going to get money for our boat. We're going to buy a new one. We're going to go back. I mean, and there's people that, that, that lost their homes or, right. or loved ones. And it's just uh, so we were we were the lucky ones. Yeah. So but I don't want to go through it again. <laughs> so. No. All right. Nobody does. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, Jay. Yeah, thank I don't even so know how we connected. Thanks. Somebody. Uh, told me your story and I, it was all it, over there it was on the news it was all over the news yeah. on fox news it was the if you google man rescued from mangroves on sanibel you'll find it on youtube and, yeah and it's funny because there's all kinds of comments there and people say what a dumbass he was on his boat or you know he so looks like, he, lo he looks awful shady what do you think he has in those two garbage bags you know oh yeah, my it's God. Just, it's you know, people, people are idiots yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh did the coast guard take video like did they have yeah the, the, yeah he oh, had the, a gopro oh, helmet so it's on if yeah it's on the it, in fact a, uh a news uh, not a news, but a film uh, crew from L.A. actually flew into uh, Tampa a couple of weeks ago and came to the apartment they were renting up in uh, Madeira Beach and 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 did a thing on because they're going to do a documentary on the storm. Yeah. Out of, yeah. And then they were coming yeah. down here to right. do it. So, so, but yeah, it was, it's on the Coast Guard. Well, if website. I can if I can find that, I'll share it with everybody that has yeah. not seen I think it I so e far. I emailed it to you. Oh, okay, I think, great, yeah. thank you. Yep. But 
Yeah. Well, Jay, man, so, it was well, so thanks. great to talk thank to you. you so thank you for coming on. And God bless stay everybody. Touch, man. Can't Let's wait to get back. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. hope thanks we see pictures of your boat. <laughs> your all new right. boat. Yeah. Jay Stoddard, everybody. Thanks. Can we get a big hand for Jay surviving the storm? Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Jay, for coming on. I can't keep it together. Crazy. All right. Before we.